Hi, I'm Cameron Motts. You've seen me in such fine quality educational videos as Oxidation Reduction in an Acidic Solution, Part 1. And is there chemical drama in choir? Okay, at the request of one of my students, I went ahead and I'm doing oxidation reduction, but this time we're gonna look for the basic uh, solution. If you did not see the video regarding oxidation reduction or redox reaction in, a, in an acid solution, and, you know, check out the other video. It's there and again for your perusal. I go through step by step working through the uh, thing. So, quick review here. Oxidation reduction in a chemical reaction, electrons kind of move around a little bit because some of them they can go fluttering away and others they end up getting picked up. Some they get picked up, sometimes they don't. But uh, for atoms, they can go and either gain electrons or lose electrons. And in oxidation, an atom loses an electron. That's the process. If in the reduction, it gains electrons. Or as two ways to memorize this, we have Leo the lion goes, grr. Leo losing electrons, oxidation, gaining electrons, reduction. That's one way to remember it. That's how I remember it when I was back in high school in honors chemistry and AP chemistry. But there's another way. And there is oil rig. Oxidation is losing, reduction is gaining. Yes. So that's another way. Some people find Leo more convenient. Other people find oil rig more convenient. Hey, uh, six of one, half a dozen of the other. Whatever works for you. Not your friends, not your teacher, you. All right, now you may be hearing a term called redox. We talk about redox equations, balancing redox equations. What is redox? What's happening? Okay, redox is a combination of two words, reduction and oxidation. They took those two words and they somehow square, and you got redox. That's how it came about. Now we're gonna look at a redox problem in a basic solution, and I'm gonna walk through you with you guys uh, step by step in this. So, here we go. In our basic solution here, we have I with a minus, so iodine, MnO4 minus, gets us I2 plus MnO2. Mm. All right, well, you know what? We're gonna have to look at this. Now, Chances are they'll probably be like an HI and a KMNO4. It doesn't matter because when that oxidation reduction action is happening, it's happening with the anions. The first, it's not. It's happening with the second part of the compound. You might possibly notice we're not so much interested in the first part of the compound. We're looking at the second part of the compound. Okay, so the first thing we want to do, just like we did for acidic, we break it down into half reactions. How are they connected to each other? So I minus to I2, okay, and MnO4 minus to MnO2. Now, I want to point something out about oxidation reduction because obviously there's some differences here in the charges and all that other good stuff. Okay, so let's take a look at the second thing. Here. Our second thing is we need to balance the atoms other than O and H. Now, you might notice in the acidic solution, we didn't need to do that. And I should have mentioned that as a step, but when you have an imbalance like this, you need to balance it out. So that's why we have 2I minus gets us I2, and notice we didn't need to worry about the MnO4 and MnO2. But somebody might be saying, wait a minute, the oxygen atoms are not balanced. Relax, we're gonna take care of it. What we're interested in is our main characters here. The hydrogen, oxygen, we're not so concerned about that because we can mess around with it. That's the cool part. That's part of the redox uh, process. So we figured it out. We've got two I minus getting us I2, MnO4 minus getting us MnO2. Okay, great, now what? Well, we're gonna add water to both sides to make up for the lack of oxygen. Now, if you notice the 2I minus and the I2, there's no oxygen, there's no hydrogen. We don't need to add water to it. Yippee! 
We don't. So, now on the MnO4 and the MnO2, we do. We have a deficit on this side of two oxygen atoms, so that means we'll have to add two waters. Wait, you've got four hydrogen atoms. C, two times two, you got four hydrogen atoms there. Relax, we are going to take care of the problem. Because our next step is, okay, we've added the water, now we're going to add the hydrogen to balance out the hydrogens in the solution. So we have four hydrogens on this side of the arrow. Guess what? We're going to have four hydrogen atoms on this side of the arrow. But wait, it's a basic solution. You can't have hydrogen ions running loose because that isn't an acid. You're right, that's true. But we're going to get those hydrogen atoms if it's the last thing we do in this video. We will. It's not over. Now the thing is, in order to cancel these out, okay, we want to neutralize the solution. So what do we do? We add OH minus. And OH minus, oh, wait, yeah, that's kind of like a basic thing because we're in a basic solution. Right. In an acid solution, you wouldn't be doing adding OH. Here we're adding OH minus because we are in a basic solution and we want to take down those hydrogens. We want to neutralize them. So that's what we do. So in this case here, we happen to have four hydrogen ions here. We're going to add four OHs right here. And that's going to cancel that out, right? Because what is it going to form? OH plus H gets us hmm, H2O, water, neutral. Okay. Now, what you do on one side of the arrow, you need to do it to the other side of the arrow as well in order to balance the thing out, okay? So you have to do that. Now we're going to form water from our H plus OH, getting us H2O. So we're going to have four waters here and the MnO4. We get MnO2 plus 2H2O and the 4OH. We just simply went and combined the hydrogen with the OH. I told you we would take out those hydrogens, and we took them down hard. Okay, next trick. Let's cancel out the waters, because there seems to be water, water, and everywhere, water, water. Not even fit to drink. Okay, rhyme of the ancient mariner reference. Don't worry about it. Okay. So cancel out the water from both sides. Well, we did. We had four waters here, two waters here, okay, two go down, two go down. No waters on this side, we got two waters left over. Notice I brought down the 2II. Notice we haven't had to do anything with them as of yet because there's no oxygen, no hydrogen. We don't have to touch them. We can leave them alone for now. Now it's time to balance out the charges. We got to balance out the charges, ladies and gentlemen. We have to add electrons to the more positive side. Now, here we have two times two I's. They each have a negative one charge because iodine, remember, it is a halogen. It's got seven valence electrons originally. So it's going to go pick up an electron and become a negative charge because that's that stable outer layer of valence. Oh my gosh, I'm going back into basic chemistry. I, I am, and that's okay. So we'll add two electrons on this side to counteract here because this was going to be the more positive side. Without those two electrons, it, this would be the more positive side. You'd say, but wait a minute, there's no charge here. How can it be more positive? Well, look on this side, it's negative. What are you going to do with a negative two charge here? You have a charge of zero. This is the more positive sign. So we have to add those two electrons in there. Okay. Now, what about this? What about this? We're crying out loud. Well, let's take a look. Here we have MnO4. And looks like here there's no charge. So this is an 8 plus. Oh, wow. And over here, we had a plus 7 charge, didn't we? Oh, yeah. Because we had O4 
four with a minus one charge, and we have each oxygen is minus two. So two times minus four is minus eight. This is a minus one charge total, so N has to be a plus seven. So that's gotta be a plus seven charge. This is a plus eight charge. Now, hold on though, before we go and figure out, hey, wait a minute, this has got more positive than this side. Why are we adding electrons here? Well, you gotta remember, we see these four OHs right there? They're going to contribute. They're going to contribute four electrons, and that's going to wipe out four of these positive charges. So now you've got a plus four, okay, to a plus seven. Now, we have to make it that both sides have the same charge. We didn't say that the charges had to be zero on both sides. They just have to be equal to each other, and that's not based on the oxygen. It's not based on the hydrogen. It's based on our main players here. So here, this total thing, counting this with this, is a total of plus four. Well, if we have a plus seven here, based off of this, how many electrons are we gonna need to reduce this seven to a plus four? Three electrons, and bamo, there you go. We've got our three electrons. Yeah, this is a topic of conversations at parties that teenagers hold everywhere across the planet. That's it. All right, let's move on. So now we've got the charges figured out. Now we've got to multiply by the appropriate factors. Well, what do you mean? We want to make the electrons equal to each other in R on both sides of the arrow. So here we have two electrons. Over here we have three electrons. So what numbers do two and three go into? Six. So we're going to multiply this side by three, this side by two, and then we're going to multiply this all out. Oh. So three times two i minus one, time, and three times i two, and three times two electrons. Woo! Over here, two times three electrons plus two times two waters plus two times one MnO4 minuses, plus two MnO2, two times one MnO2s, plus two times four OH minuses on the opposite side of the arrow. This is getting messy, but we gotta add it up. Nobody ever said that redox was going to be an easy job. We just said you're gonna need to do it. So here it is, you're gonna add them up. So you have six iodine with a minus one charge. See, two times three is Six. You got six electrons. Ah, three times two electrons, six electrons here. Four waters. Okay, so we're going to go here. Two times two, four waters. And then two MnO4. Two times one MnO4 gives us two. Now we're going to go on the opposite side of the arrow here. And here we got three times I, one I2. Three times two gets us six electrons. Two times MnO2 over here, two times one is two, and then two times four OH is eight OH. Whoa! Yeah, can you imagine that? This is just downright messy. But it's not over, because we got, I think we got through the hard part. The next for trick, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to simplify. Well, how in the world do we go and simplify this? Well, is there anything we can do to cancel stuff out? Mm, well, hey, guess what? You know what we can do? The electrons. We got six electrons on each side of the arrow. Yay! We can cancel those. Oh my gosh, yes, that's true. We can, can't we? Now, is there anything else we can cancel? Now, see all these twos, fours, and sixes, and eights? Hey, maybe we could divide it by two. It looks good to do that, but you run into a problem because you see you've got that three I two there. That's not happening, ladies and gentlemen. Here's the rea here is the absolute reality. This puts the limit on everything else uh, out there. So. What's going to be our final redox equation? The final one. The big kahuna. Here it is. 6i minus plus 4H2O plus 
2 m n o 4 minus gets us, I'm going to have to do it this way, and I'm going to write it in another color, 3 i 2 plus 2 m n o 2 plus 8 o h minus. That's it. Read it and weep. Gone through quite a bit, haven't we? It's been a long road. And I know that this is definitely making new paths in your mind. And you're thinking, can I do this? Sure you can. But you're going to need to practice it. Okay? And that's something. I've shown you how to do it. But you've got to practice it. You have to become familiar with it. Which might result in me making another video about oxidation states and how can we tell what is what. I've already shown you guys how we figured that out. Okay, so you're going to make your half reactions. Make sure you get the same number of atoms, forget the O and the H, on both sides of the arrow. Then we go ahead and we start adding H's, hydrogens. I mean, sorry. Um, we do our half reactions. Then we balance the atoms out other than O and H. Then we add water to make up for our lack of oxygen. So that's what we have. Then we add H's to balance out the H's in the solution. So in other words, here we have the H. Then we add the OH to both sides to neutralize the H+. Plus. Okay, And you have to add the OH to both sides for it. And remember OH because it's a basic solution. It's not an acidic solution. That is different. Okay, And then form H2O from the H plus the OH, so this is what we have. And then after that we can cancel out the H2O from both sides, okay, and this is what we have. And notice I brought down the 2I minus and the I2, all right. Nothing's really happening with them, that's exciting. But until we get to adding the electrons, and that's where you need to know your oxidation numbers. And if you notice, I showed you guys how to calculate that, okay. And then, of course, we multiply by the appropriate factors. You say, well, what is going to determine the appropriate factors we need to multiply? Remember, at this point, you are trying to cancel out the electrons on both sides. So ultimately, you want to eliminate the electrons from this process, which means you need the same number of electrons on both sides of the equation. OK? As we're winding down here, we add up everything, and notice we can simplify, and notice I took out the electrons, those pesky little things, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is our finest. Yes! Woo! Oh, we're done! We're done! We're done! I'm Cameron Motts, and I'm saying to you, good luck.